Hi, I'm Dr. Yulia Pacheni, and today we're going to talk about using the GlideScope for intubation. This is a hyperangulated blade. Um, there's different kinds, but in our university, we use the GlideScope. It's um, useful to talk about and compare the difference between using a GlideScope versus direct laryngoscopy. When you intubate someone with direct laryngoscopy, you use a blade, like this MAC-3 for example, to create a direct line of sight from the patient's vocal cords to your eyeball. This involves aligning the patient's oral, pharyngeal, and laryngeal axes as best as possible with proper positioning, followed by displacing the patient's tongue and soft tissue with the blade of the laryngoscope. Once you successfully get an adequate view, the next step is placing the ET tube through the vocal cords. You still have to get it in the right hole, but if you get an adequate view, the next part is relatively easy. In contrast, with GlideScope, you aren't making a direct line of sight from the cords to your eye. What you're doing is using a camera to get around the corner to see the vocal cords. Getting a beautiful view of the cords is much easier with GlideScope than it is with DL. Oftentimes, you just stick the blade in the mouth and boom, you get a beautiful view of the cords. All of a sudden, all the difficulty you had obtaining a good view is now gone. However, especially for new users to GlideScope or those already familiar with DL, the challenge comes with passing the ET tube through the cords. Recall that for DL, this was the easy step and now suddenly it's reversed. You got a beautiful view of the cords, but now the darn tube just won't pass through the cords. GlideScope makes a rigid stylet that is almost necessary for this. You can use a conventional stylet, but it'll be a lot more difficult. So I recommend using a rigid one like this. One common mistake is holding the ET tube around the midpoint in a pencil grip like this, similar to what you would do with a DL. Again, this works great for DL, but not for GlideScope. So what you wanna do is you wanna grip your tube all the way at the top overhand like this, so you can glide the tip anteriorly and pop the stylet, which is important that we will later discuss. Once you place the tip of the ET tube into the cords, you'll find that a lot of times you'll meet resistance. This is because the tip of the tube is now trying to go into the anterior tracheal wall. Because the tip of the stylet is rigid, it is hard to have it flexed down to further feed into the trachea. This is when you want to pop your stylet to soften the tip of the tube so that it can further feed into the trachea. You can see when you get through the cords, the tip of the tube is facing anteriorly towards the tracheal wall. This may also be contributing to your resistance. Another solution you can try is to rotate your tube clockwise so that the tip of the tube is now facing towards the trachea and you can feed your tube down. It's very enticing to get in a very close up view and easy to do so with the GlideScope. However, it's gonna prove difficult to be able to visualize your ET tube coming in peripherally with such a close view and provides um, an increased angle for you to be able to pass the tube. So what you wanna do is you want to have your larynx about one third to one half of your screen to be able to get a wide peripheral view of your tube going in. Once you have the tube where you want it and you're taking the rigid stylet out, you wanna make sure you're not pulling straight back on the stylet because this will have a tendency to move the tube backwards out of the airway. So you want, you wanna do is you want to take the stylet out towards the feet in a natural curve out. Okay, let's go over the steps once again in detail. Scissor open the mouth. Place the blade midline on top of the tongue while looking at the mouth. Do not look at the screen yet. Once you have your blade in your mouth, then you look at the screen. Position the laryngoscope so that the larynx is in view and taking up about a third to half of the, your screen. Once you have your larynx in view, place your tube while looking at the mouth when you originally go in with an overhand grip until it's in the mouth. Now you can look at the screen. Direct the tip of the ET tube through the cords. Once you meet resistance, pop up your stylet so that you can further feed your tube into the trachea. 
Once you have the tube where you want it, hold the tube with your left hand or if you have an assistant that can pull the stylet for you, grab the top of the stylet and pull it towards the patient's feet so that your hand ends up on their chest. You should have seen the ET tube pass through the cords, but make sure you also confirm placement with capnography and auscultations. That is Glidescope Intubation. Thanks for watching.